What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM on this device. And the last time I used Pixel Experience Plus on the Redmi K20 Pro was actually on 2020. I did not use Pixel Experience Plus for a long time because the like experience for me was too much vanilla and even on the Pixel Experience Plus build there are not many customization which I use on a daily basis. So that is why I did not try it. And if you ask me personally, like right now, I have been using this ROM for a couple of days now, like four to five days. Still, I would say it, the situation has not changed much. Let me explain over here. For that, just make sure to watch the full video because I'm gonna explain every bit of it. So let me show you there is one regular version and of course there is one plus edition and here I have been like using the plus edition of course because I can't simply use the regular edition because it's like too much vanilla for me and here as you can see this is based on OSS vendor not on MIUI vendor right now. So if you're worried about OSS vendor stuff you should not be because the latest OSS vendor based ROMs does not have any issues or if you're worried about losing your L1 certification that simply won't happen with the latest OSS vendor based ROMs. So just in case if you're worried I'm just saying that and here the build size is about 1.5 GB for both here it shows and if you do not know how to flash this ROM yes the flashing procedure is still similar and you can check that card right there to flash this ROM or just check out the description it is pretty similar like you just wipe cache talvik system dira and vendor and then just flash the ROM and then flash fclip disabler and magisk if you need that then you just reboot and it will boot automatically to the system and that will be totally fine and if you are moving from MIUI I would say just format data then flash the ROM. If you are coming from a custom ROM you don't need to format data if your storage is decrypted already. If you don't know what I am talking about just watch the like flashing guide from there or from the description again. Talking about the update situation on the Pixel Experience Plus here I have received one more update that is the June 2021 update over here as you can see and I was on the May 2021 build let me show you if I can. Okay, so this is the 26th May 2021. As you can see, this is the build I was using, but I did update it recently today. So yeah, it did fix some bugs. As you can see, it has this fixed audio issues from the latest build. So yeah, on the previous build, there was audio issue. Like sometimes, even when you have the headphones connected, if you are playing something in YouTube or something, the audio was simply not audible. So yeah, that bug was there and the video just like played slowly. That was kind of the thing, I guess. So yeah, that bug right now has been fixed and there is fixed Wi-Fi display for Miracast and stuff and it has the fixie kernel over here and added raise to wake gesture. So that is great. We'll test that. Let me show you the Android version section. This is how it looks like. Of course, pretty vanilla again and we have the Android 11 version as you can see and we have the security patch as still May 2021, not quite June yet. And the stop kernel is fixie kernel over here and the build number you can see this is the first June 2021 build. For the pixel experience plus official rom now let me show you the system and here we have the system updated on the bottom as you can see and of course you can check for updates whenever there is a new update of course and you can also use this updated if you want to if your storage is encrypted it will work better i guess so if your storage is decrypted maybe i would just suggest like updating it manually if you do not know how to update manually just check out the description again now here let's go into the status bar section we have the network traffic monitor over here and in the system icons we have the headset bluetooth etc icons as you can see and we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar then we have the clock position changing option right left or center options are there for that and show seconds you can also enable the seconds if you want to on the clock as you can see and we have the am pm style changing option you can have it on the small normal or hidden and we have the battery status style this we have the icon portrait circle and text that's it we do not simply get any big dotted circle or something and here we have the next to the icon battery percentage or you can have it inside the icon then brightness slider you can have it on show always and i have it on show always that's the reason why i can like see the brightness slider even when my quick setting panel is not fully expanded and when it is expanded it also shows up over there so yeah and we have the brightness control so you can adjust the brightness just by sliding a finger on the status bar as you are noticing and this is a very handy feature for me at least and i do use it on a daily basis works great auto brightness is there you can like disable it if you want to and quick pull down you can set it right or left or you can turn it off if you want to and column and row number you can customize it from here too in the buttons we have the system navigation gestures and in the settings we have the left edge right edge customization and you can disable the gesture indicator so if you want to hide this fill bar i guess i can do that and we have the edge touch area as you are noticing 
so you can customize that this is for the back gesture as you can see you can customize the area for the back gesture and we have the two button and three button navigation as well and over there we have the invert layout for each of them now in the power menu we do have the advanced restart as you can see and if i show you the power menu of course this looks pretty similar and we have the google home smart light kind of features and then we have the like advanced reboot of course you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot or you can just reboot the system device control and sensitive control both are there and we have the end call with the like power button then long press power button toggle torch is there then if you scroll down we have some control playback and stuff reorient and click to take partial screenshot and stuff is there jumping into the gesture settings here we have the quickly open camera then we have this system navigation gesture again and here we also get the swipe to take screenshot now this swipe to take screenshot is not like what i'm liking too much because as you can see there is no delete or scrolling option over here just we get the edit option and if you tap on it this is just the google markup over here so you can mark something if you want to you can delete the screenshot or you can share it and like save it over here so yeah this is how it is and we have the pop-up camera settings now even though this rom is based on oss vendor i simply cannot see the pop-up camera calibration option over here which is kind of a disappointment because most of the OSS vendor based ROMs include that feature but here you do not get the calibration settings. Here we have the sound effects for the pop-up camera and you get these many sounds and the camera LED option is there you can disable it if you want to. The default keyboard over here is Gboard so that is not an issue and of course this is pixel experience and all the pixel experience ROMs include the G apps in it so you don't need to flash any separate G apps or something if you're worried about that. Now let's talk about the stock launcher well this is how it looks like and I would say this is the pixel launcher definitely and you don't get any double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen you just can disable the suggestions over here if you want to let me actually show you the settings this is how it looks like so yeah and the widgets in the home screen are working fine no issues with that the wallpaper i'm using is from the wallp app you can get it from the description to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page of course and if you swipe up you get the app drawer and when you swipe down you get the like quick settings panel of course and yeah the like stock launcher is pretty smooth no issues that i have had over here now let's talk about the stock camera this is the oldest google camera i should say and you might not like it as you can see it may break the camera okay so yeah it is working but this is a very basic kind of camera that you get and yeah i don't like this camera at all so that's the reason why i have flashed the anx camera version 185r with magisk and if you have no idea what i'm talking about how to flash this miui camera and stuff over here you can check out the card right there or you can check out the description for this anx camera flashing guide and with the anx camera flashing guide you will also get the like how to get magisk hide or the banking apps working so no issues with that you can get that from the description and of course with this all the lenses are working fine as you can see wide angle telephoto etc and if you go even into the video mode we have the 4k 60 fps option which you do not get in most devices and here we have the portrait mode and that is working fine the front camera and stuff everything is working fine even with portrait mode and stuff so no issues with the anx camera or the miui camera over here it is working great talking about the quick settings panel yes this is how it looks like pretty vanilla and we have a couple of toggles added and let me show you you can add these nfc toggle and stuff if you have a global redmi k20 pro that should work and we have the storage and other things like the app kind of quick toggles let me show you what i have added so we do have the night light and stuff but let me show you with the night light turned on yes it does work it makes the display yellowish but if you do this as you can see the night light still stays on so in some oss roms that i have seen that when you have night light turned on sometimes it disables itself when you are like increasing or decreasing the brightness here it simply does not happen as you can see night light is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever then there is the battery saver the dark theme and we also have the screen recorder of android 11 with this you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time that works fine and we have the hotspot do not disturb data saver heads up disabling option or enabling option you might call it that way you can disable or enable aod from here live display is there then the volume panel is there you can just tap the toggle and then you get the volume panel over here so this is great but no fps info toggle or something over here which are missing in the mobile network settings we do have the wi-fi calling as you can see and you can enable it if you want to by the way this is how the stock in call ui looks like and this is simply a pixel dialer or google dialer and as you can see no call recording option are present over here but vault calling actually works but again there is no vault icon over here now let's jump into the battery settings this is how it looks like and if you tap on the battery icon it doesn't do anything you have to tap on the three dots then battery usage to see the full battery usage and here i would say the battery life is decent and you can get simply six to seven hours of screen on time easily on a daily basis and also the fast charging is working fine 
and in the battery section as you are noticing we have the optimization profile this is the thermal profiles and from here you can customize the thermal profiles like no optimization performance browser camera then the dialer games and streaming application and stuff so yeah you can change the per app thermal profiles and we have the battery saver then the adaptive battery then we have turn on the light when charging option then full charge lasts about how long it predicts and we have the screen on time and that's it we simply do not see the charging cycle or the battery temperature or something like that the current battery capacity design battery capacity those things are simply missing from the battery settings now in the display settings we have the brightness level and stuff you can like change it if you want to in the dark theme you can have the scheduling option and night light you can also schedule that and we have the adaptive brightness this is for the auto brightness of course you can also enable the auto brightness by just tapping over here inside live display we have the display mode and of course you can have it on the outdoor bright sun so if you enable this as you can see the display just becomes too much bright and this is a very helpful feature if you're going outdoors or something you can just turn it on and the display will go too bright so that simply works and we have the automatic mode over here then inside color calibration we have the red green and blue option then inside picture adjustment you can also control the hue saturation intensity and contrast of the display so that is great for the like amoled display you can fully take advantage of like with the settings and in the styles and wallpapers we have these presets of the themes and you can also customize the theme as you can see these are the fonts you get and these are the icons you get and you have these accent colors and you can just tap on the accent color and then click next and create a custom theme you can apply that for that accent color i would say a lot of accent colors are simply missing as you can see there is no yellow or something over here so that is kind of a bummer that we simply do not get much of the options in the wallpaper section we have this come alive and stuff so these are the default wallpapers that you get the live wallpapers and also we have much more wallpaper options over here so no issues with the wallpapers even though i am using a separate app for the, my wallpaper and here we have the screen timeout as you can see you can have set it to like 30 minutes up to and in the rotation settings we have up to 180 degree 270 degree options and in the colors we have set to boosted but there is the saturated adaptive and natural colors let me go back we have the font size display size screen saver option in the lock screen we have the show lockdown option and stuff then the display media cover art music visualizer is there but let me tell you there is no option for always unlock with the fingerprint scanner over here that is a bummer and as you can see always on display is on right now so let me just turn it off so that i can turn on this pickup and pulse notification on pickup then wake device on pickup over here so let me just tap on this wake device on pickup let's just put the device over here on the table right now let me just pick it up so yeah it actually works as you can see so that is great let me just show you one more time let's just put it on the desk and right now let's just okay so as you can see it woke up automatically so yeah it is actually working the wake device feature is quite good here we have the double tap to wake then the double tap to sleep also we have the wake up on plug disabling option then we have the prevent accidental wake up disabling option or enabling option but let me tell you there is no option for the dc dimming over here so if you are looking for that yes the dc dimming option is simply not there maybe it is turned on by default i'm not really sure let me just decrease the brightness so that i can see i would say by looking at the flickering i would say no no disabling option over here in the sound settings we have all these like sounds over here and we have the vibrate for calls and stuff by the way the volume panel looks like this over here and you can expand it of course we have the media and the shortcut to prevent ringing and stuff then we have the ringtone kind of changing option and dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound vibration touch sound touch vibration vibrate to indicate calls everything else is there and we have the me sound enhancer too so if you go into it we have the youth edition and stuff and as you can see plethora of headphone options that are there and i would say the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is just amazing no issue that i have had with bluetooth or the 3.5m headphones and you can choose a preset from here as you can see plethora of presets that you get and the hi-fi audio option is also there let me go back from here we have the other things like the security settings and here we have the fingerprint option and the face unlock in the whole UI, there is no app lock option. So that is a bummer. In most ROMs, you get the app lock right now, but this Pixel Experience ROM does not come with the app lock. That is straight up a disappointment for me at least. Now, let me show you the Fingerbit scanner speed first. Let's just double tap to sleep. And here, as you can see, the always on display right now is on. So from the always on display, if I tap the Fingerbit scanner and it unlocks. Let me show you one more time from the always on display with my left hand thumb. Now I'll do from the lock screen over here and here as you can see it unlocks i just restored my previous like backup that's why in the lock screen you see this dot os wallpaper because i did a dot os video previously so yeah 
and here as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is totally fine no issues whatsoever so the fingerprint scanner is actually working flawlessly but there is no fingerprint scanner animation let me go into the settings even here we have this unlock with fingerprint when the screen is off but again no fingerprint scanner animations over here so you get those in most roms right now again and you simply do not get that in this pixel experience plus rom even we have the lock screen timeout over here so you can change these and we have the power button instantly locks and we have the face unlock but before i show you the face unlock let me show you this lock screen clock style over here you cannot simply change that either there is no option to change the lock screen aod clock style so that is a bummer again now let's just set up the face unlock let me show you how it works so yeah the setup is fine i guess right now i'm gonna just double tap over here on the status bar and double tap to wake and i swipe up then the camera pops out and it unlocks so pretty simplistic face unlock over here and it is working fine i guess so yeah the face unlock actually works but you have to swipe up every time you are using the face unlock now let me show you the safety net test here everything passes so that means you can use banking apps on this rom right out of the box even though i'm using it with the magic guide you can use banking apps without any issues even if you're not flashing magic or if you're flashing magic just use magic guide just watch the anx camera video from the description i have showed that in that particular video talking about drm info yes my drm certification still shows l3 that's because i have broken it permanently from like way past but here you should not be worried if you still have l1 and you will not lose your l1 certification by just flashing this oss vendor based roms right now because in the latest oss vendor based roms that bug is fixed so right now i have a lot of apps opened over here as you can see in the memory and i'm gonna try to open each of them to show you guys the memory management on this rom so right now let's first open chrome yes still in memory now facebook as you can see is in memory Instagram is still in memory and really sorry because of the dog in the background and yeah we have Twitter in memory and Google Home still in memory and YouTube yes it is still in memory Twitter as you can see is in memory Play Store again in memory and we have the other things like Telegram yes still in the RAM and we have this coin switch app too so yeah pretty much all the apps are staying in memory so yes this is pixel experience pretty much king in RAM management I would say so no issues whatsoever with the RAM management on this particular ROM, I would say. Every app stays in memory. And if you're worried about the performance over here, like daily driving performance, it is gonna be a smooth and like blazing fast experience. The recent panel looks like this. You can take a screenshot or select some text. And if you tap here, you can go to the split screen pin or the pause app mode, or you can go to the apps info over here. And if you go all the way to the left, we can clear all the apps from here. Okay, so yeah, that did the animation weird because like I touched over here while it was clearing all the apps. So yeah, and if you're like worried about the gaming performance and stuff here, the Android and Geekbench score of this particular ROM. And talking about Google Assistant, let me show you. Hey Google. As you can see, the voice trigger is also working fine. So no issues with the Google Assistant. The Google Assistant voice trigger works great over here. So what do I think about this Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro? I still say that if you're someone who likes a vanilla Android experience, you can definitely go for this if you don't need an app lock, if you don't need fingerprint scanner animation, if you don't need the options for to change the like lock screen clock or something, then you can go for this. And if you don't need always unlock with the fingerprint scanner, these kind of stuff, definitely you should go with the Pixel Experience Plus ROM or just the Pixel Experience ROM if you don't want any customization over here. If you don't want quick pull down to be there and stuff like that, you can go with the Pixel Experience normal ROM. But here I would say you get a little bit of customization and with that if you can live with it maybe go for this one but otherwise if you really need the app lock if you really need always unlock with the few mid scanner and stuff I would still suggest sticking with the ROS maybe official or community I would say you can go with any one of them both ROS are maybe in my personal opinion are better than this Pixel Experience Plus ROM that's what I think. Please share this video if you liked it and if you want your friends to know about the Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro how it's working, you can show them out with this video. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Zero from KD and Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.